Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. This is snake number six of our six venomous snakes of South Carolina. Coming up. Fangs in your face. Subscribe now. Hey, before we get started, I want a big thank you to some of our generous contributors. Hey, Shania Franklin, welcome to the Venom Squad, baby. Uh, Shania has signed up. She is a monthly sponsor of one of the Eyelash Vipers. Outstanding. Thank you so much, Shania. Uh, Paul Breslin, thank you so much, Paul. Dan McCarty, always got to be Dan McCarty. <laughs> He's our main man, right? And Peter Carmichi, thank you so much, Peter, for everything that you do for the Serpent Center. What's happening, Venom Squad? I know we're a little tardy with the videos, but we've been a little swamped. <laughs> and it's gonna be a little swamped for the next month until we can get open. <clears throat> we've had a few setbacks. We've had a few setbacks, but it's, it, it's, it's nothing's gonna stop us. And uh, I don't wanna turn my channel into a drama channel, but I'd like to tell you all what happened because <laughs> we were steaming hot, but we got things ironed out. And I'll tell you, um, things are moving forward. We're doing good, we're making progress now. So stay tuned because the big premiere will be coming soon of the Serpent Center. And we can't wait to see y'all in person. We, we really can't. Um, we can't wait to open the doors for our grand opening. The Eastern Diamondback. Snake number six of our six venomous snakes of South Carolina series is an important one. Okay, it, it, Eastern Diamondback is the largest venomous snake in North America. It, it's the largest rattlesnake. It, it, it holds the record for, for being eight foot they get quite big you know and unfortunately i don't have a pure eastern diamondback to show you and what's funny is i used to breed eastern diamondbacks i had albinos i had really aberrant pattern ones i had a bunch of cool ones i used to breed them pretty readily and now that they're an important animal and i'm gonna tell you I, i've been saying this for years the eastern diamondback is going to be a very important animal it's going to be a very important animal just because of its life habits and its and, 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 and the way that it lives and it's a solitary snake and where they're at they're actually you know eastern diamondbacks are located here in the southeast where there's a few states that do rattlesnake roundups still and one good thing is georgia just in the past few years has changed their rattlesnake roundup procedures where they're educational now kudos to georgia i mean funny check this out georgia I, i've been snake hunting for over 30 years and I'm gonna tell you I've hunted all through the southeast and I've been all over the state snake hunting been all over the world snake hunting but I'm gonna tell you Georgia has some of the most backwards laws that I've ever seen in my life I mean you can go to Georgia and herp okay and you can catch kill as many venomous snakes as you want but you can't touch a non-venomous snake <laughs> and, and I'll tell you and that's where the problem lies was you know the eastern diamondbacks are in great decline and I used to be able, here in South Carolina, I used to be able, I've been coming down here for 30 plus years just to find snakes. And, you know, on a good weekend trip down here, now we live here, we've been here for a long time, you know, it, it was nothing. We, we would see five, six EDBs, you know, it, it was a real treat to see an Eastern Dime back in a while. And now that I live here, and just over the past 15 years, I've noticed that, you know, we don't see them no more. <laughs> we just don't. I mean, the last one I seen was two years ago, two years ago, and, and I hunted pretty hard and, you know, you, you just don't see them no more. And, and it's, it's habitat destruction. It's, you know, it, it, it's just so many different factors, you know, but I've always said that it's going to be an important snake for a venomous snake breeder. And me, I should have taken my own advice. I should have kept a colony of Easterns, just normal Easterns, and kept breeding them because now they are of a medical importance. They really are and they're finding out new things daily with venom and we're going to hit on some venom stuff i'm not going to drag it out too much but sadly enough i don't have a big eastern diamondback to show you i need some eastern diamondbacks if anybody out there has a couple edbs they want to donate to the serpent center for a breeding program and for exhibit email us because we need a couple and i don't want to go take one out of the wild that's just something i don't want to do because 
EDBs are few and far between here in South Carolina anymore. So we're going to get with it and I'm going to hit some interesting facts on Venom, on the importance of the Eastern Diamondback and just how the Eastern Diamondback needs to be preserved. We don't have a big Eastern to show you, but we do have a surprise, okay? <laughs> we're going to pull out one of the monster bat wings, which is a hybrid of an Eastern Diamondback and a timber rattlesnake. And this this big one, he has, he, he leans more towards the Eastern Diamondback. He, he really looks like Eastern Diamondback, but, and, and it's actually a naturally occurring hybrid. It happens right here in South Carolina and Georgia. Um, so it's, it's an interesting animal, but he's fun to look at. So we're having a little bit of fun today, but to get on Eastern Diamondback venom and the importance of it. I always say venom has so many different components because they work synergistically. Okay, they all work for each other. Just recently, they're finding out that, you know, there's an L amino acid oxidase that's contained in the Eastern Diamondback venom. And, and this L amino acid that is contained in, in EDB venom, it, it, it's containing and showing activity of anticoagulant and procoagulant. So it works on both ends of the spectrum. And people wonder, well, why does that, you know, wh why would it do both, you know? I mean, who knows? Different prey items may need different resources to dispatch them quickly. Or maybe one works on one set of organs and another works on a different set. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all about dispatching prey. This snake is, is really going to be an important animal. And the Eastern Diamondback needs to be protected across all the Southeast not just in certain states and other states still have roundups. I mean, this snake does deserve protection, not only because it can be a medically significant snake, but also because this snake fits in an ecosystem. He's very important. He, he, he's a niche that's got to be there, even though they're big and they're, they're ominous looking, but I'll tell you, they're secretive, you know, and the states that are still doing them roundups, you know, they're not only destroying the Eastern Diamondbacks and other rattlesnakes. Alabama, for instance, it's all rattlesnakes. It, they're all fair game, okay? But these guys are gas and tortoise burrows, which are harbor, you know, many different species of animal, not just the tortoises and the rattlesnakes. They harbor like 300 different species of animal, of, of, from insects to, to damn reptiles, to amphibians, to even owls, you know? So... It's an important animal for our ecosystem and it deserves protection. I'm gonna pull out a big rattlesnake, okay? <laughs> and this is a big sucker. And he's he's not pure Eastern Diamondback. He's just half Eastern Diamondback, but he's really got a lot of Eastern Diamondback traits. Just to give you an idea of just how big and robust an Eastern Diamondback can get. And Eastern Diamondbacks, they fit in that niche where they control vermin okay but they're also a food source for other animals so it's just important that we try to preserve these wonderful animals i mean i love them especially here in south carolina because we don't see them no more like we used to you know but i'm gonna pull out a big monster bat wing rattlesnake we call them bat wings because of their color and they kind of get like a pattern on it sometimes it looks like that looks like the batman signal <laughs> but uh i'm gonna bust out a big rattlesnake for y'all Okay, just so you can get an idea of just how massive an Eastern Diamondback can get, I'm going to show you this, this hybrid Eastern Diamondback, because I don't have a, a pure Eastern Diamondback at the moment, but this guy's a monster. Even though this ain't pure Eastern, he, he's really strong Eastern tendencies, but he's a big boy, okay? <laughs> he's a big puppy, though. But just because it's a big puppy doesn't mean I'm going to take any kind of liberties with him because I'm going to tell you something. A bite from an Eastern Diamondback would be horrific. It would be a death sentence. Look at the size of that boy. <laughs> he's a big, healthy boy. Oh, he, he's heavy, too. <laughs> he's got some weight to him. This is a big male. Look at the rattle on this guy, huh? He's got a string on him, boy. He's a, he's a boss hog. You know, what's important is that, is, is that people need to realize is that you know, Eastern Diamondbacks, you know, they're important to the ecosystem, of course, but this, this snake does not mature until it's several years old, you know, and they only have broods of up to, you know, I mean, 12 babies is, is a good sized brood. I mean, they don't have a bunch of babies and they only do it every other year, if that, you know, and I mean, neonate survival rate is slim to none. I mean, 
even though they're, the babies are born big, I mean, they're born big enough to take an adult mouse right out of the gate, but there's still, there's a lot of predators that prey on baby Eastern Diamondbacks. And the importance of this animal for the ecosystem and for, for, for medical science now, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's a really important animal and, and we need to start preserving them now before it's too late, you know, because the next thing you know, they'll be like um, <laughs> non-existent, you know. So it is definitely an important animal to the ecosystem. What's interesting is that this, is, this snake has been discovered that they, they actually go through an oncogenic change just like a lot of other snakes do when it comes to them. And just recently we found out that the babies go through a change from baby to juvenile and then from juvenile to sex and mature adult. A bite from an eastern talk about antivenom, an approximate dose of antivenom for, for a large eastern bite like this would probably be 25 to 30 vials of profab. And this is a kill bite. This, you know, this snake has the capability of taking life. But to get bit by an eastern in the wild would really be a rarity. I mean, most bites happen in captivity by keepers or, or, or people doing something foolish, you know. So, the Eastern Diamondback is a dangerous animal if it's mishandled, you know. And you see a lot of people that take way too many liberties with an animal like this, and it's just foolish. But with the venom of this snake, I'll tell you, what's interesting is they don't only... The, the, the damn venom component ain't just varying from locale to locale, you know, from the, the northern portions of its range to the southern portions of its range. They're, they're actually found out that they're going through oncogenic change in species alone, like from mainly to adult. And what we found is that there are, all right, dude, I'm going to have to grab his rattle to quiet him down. And I'm going to... Hold his rattle real gentle like that <laughs> while he stretches out there. And what was found is that, like in neonates to adults, now the change is happening from baby to adult, where there are three toxins being being actually downregulated, and there's nine toxins being upregulated when they reach adulthood. And why? I believe it's because of prey source. Now. Baby Eastern Diamondback venom is deadly. I mean, it is effective deadly on rodents. Whereas adult venom is not that deadly on rodents and babies are. But the adult venom, you want to talk about knocking down squirrels and rabbits? Oh, it knocks them down quick, Jack. I mean, it's deadly to, to a different prey source. So that's the whole reason behind this ontogenic change in this animal's venom. That's what I believe. But, He's big and kind of hard to keep a hold of. <laughs> oh, six and a half. He's damn near seven foot. Get him stressed out there. He is a big boy. <laughs> He's a good boy, though. <laughs> but interestingly enough, is, is that this snake, as, as mean and ominous as it looks, they're, it, they're fairly a gentle animal. And they would rather just go about their business than be disturbed or be bothered. I mean, they're not going to attack you. I mean, you have to step on one to get bit. I mean, you have to be doing something pretty foolish to get bit by Eastern Diamondback. And bites by Eastern and Wild are really rare. But that's our big boy. But we need to get some pure Easterns. I need to start a breeding project with EDBs because the labs are going to be needing them. And we're going to need them here at the Serpent Center. And I'll tell you, um, it's, it's important for, for the labs to have nice, healthy animals. I mean, wild-caught animals can be turned into a good lab subject with time, but captive-born animals always fare better in a lab situation. And that's what we try to do here at the Serpent Center, is we supply a lot of labs with nice, captive-born specimens. That is one hell of a rattlesnake. <laughs> and this guy needs a he needs an exhibit sponsor if anybody wants to sponsor this big massive rattlesnakes exhibit 
Email us. Let us know. We would love to have a sponsor for him. He needs a sugar daddy. <laughs> Let's put this boy back nice and gently. So the EDB, it's an important animal that we need to protect, especially here in South Carolina, across all its range. So the EDB, snake number six on the venomous snakes of South Carolina. This concludes our venomous snakes of South Carolina series. <laughs> but anyways, hey, the merch, guys. Go to venomcentral.org and check out our merch page. Every little bit helps. Check out one of our t-shirts. There's some pretty cool ones on there. Hey, if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, Hit that B logo thing and subscribe now and come on back to Venom Central and the Serpent Center coming soon for some truly educational content. This is Willie. We're checking out. Later.